to introduce you to FNA Van Life. Hello. Hey. Hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> Hi, we're so happy to be here. Thanks for having us. Awesome. I'm so glad you're here. All right. You, you grew up in Ontario. Whereabouts in Ontario? In Pickering, just outside of Toronto. Okay. Um, Side, yeah, and then now my parents live in Prince Edward County, which is even further east, um, which is like kind of like wine country, like a bunch oh, of breweries, yeah. and breweries and cute little shops, and so it's actually really nice to go visit them now because, like, I grew up in a suburb and nothing wrong with that, but it's much nicer to visit a lake house when yeah. you come to visit. <laughs> it's extremely beautiful to be out there, and it's like the sunsets are sort of like endless. It yeah, seems like really every day beautiful. there's a beautiful sunset. The endless skies, right? Land of the living skies is Saskatchewan, anyways. Oh, and where are you from? I'm from Brooklyn, New York, originally, but I've lived in Brooklyn as well as Florida. Um, you know, so I shared uh, living between those two states. But everybody could tell the Brooklyn accent right off the bat, and they pinned me for that right away. You know, especially when you say New York. Say yeah. New York again. New York. <laughs> See, it's so different. Or when I hear people say roof instead of roof, I'm like. Yeah, I say roof. <laughs> you sound like you're a dog, like roof, roof, roof. You <laughs> <laughs> have a problem with the R's. <laughs> so how is Paco doing with the travels? Oh, he's really enjoying the taste of my legs right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love. He's doing really good. Um, so we adopted him in early June um, from Brookings, Oregon, which is right on the coast of Oregon. We were traveling north at the time, and we weren't sure if, you know, and we would be able to adopt because we, you know, we live in a van and we don't have a permanent residence and, you know, all this stuff. But the lady there was really like excited for, you know, Paco to become a van dog. She was like, oh, I, you know. She was like, that's the best life for a dog. Yeah, she's Dallas. like, I've homed yeah. other dogs with like RV couples and like, you know, it's so awesome and they're in nature all the time. And, and honestly, Paco absolutely seems to love it. He's like loves going on hikes, loves running around. You know, he's always outside. He's always constantly with us as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he, he very rarely has like his alone time, which for him is like <laughs> exciting to be with us always. <laughs> so yeah. we go into the grocery store and he's like, he's at the window, just looking like waiting. <laughs> we come back, he's still at the same window. Yeah. You know. But yeah, I think because he went from like the shelter, which was not a great experience. Like he had some scars and like stuff going on yeah. um, to like a mm -hmm. van where now he's in a happy home. Mm -hmm. He never had to, it wasn't like he lived in a happy home and then had to adjust to a van. It was like, he went from a shitty situation to being really mm -hmm. happy living in a van. Yeah. You know? know, he's great with travel. He's great with mm -hmm. driving. Mm -hmm. He's, you know, we're in a new place all the time and he's just like excited to explore. Yep. yep. Even, yeah. Even if you go back to like the original video when we adopted him, you could see like his, he was just like curled up in this corner over here like this and his his I'm attitude everything has changed so much you know he just like his his personality came out 100 percent. you know he's a great Aww. dog we love him to death uh. he's not great on camera though he doesn't like come on buddy. he's shy he keeps hiding down there We're good. Aww. Better? And look, <laughs> My, usually my white little one, my Bailey, usually comes. Oh, 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 one with me right now. Oh, so sweet. Must have known I was talking about another dog. Oh, here's the other one. <laughs> <laughs> now you've started it. Now they're like, yeah. oh, it's playtime. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Now they're going to start roughhousing. So yes. you guys each had your own separate YouTube channels before this one, before you sure. met. Correct. Yeah. Yes, we did. So how did that work combining to this one? Because wouldn't you have been used to being, you know, one man, one woman show, calling the shots, making the rules. Like now it's a different picture. How is that different for you? I feel like it kind of was a little bit like scary and nerve wracking for both of us. Which is why we didn't merge. do it for a while. Like yeah. when oh. we first started traveling, it was, he still had his channel and I still had my channel. And I think, I maybe me more than you is or like he was still a lot making a lot of snowboard videos and then I didn't really want those on my channel and then I was still making you know like so it did we didn't really combine until after we quarantined yeah I think we realized at that point that we were working so hard to try to put out a video once a week on each of our channels where we could just be working together and putting them out mm -hmm. on one channel and that was already monetized at that point so then we could create a revenue stream 
to get an income at least, you know, while we travel and uh -huh. make make this lifestyle not only fun uh, and enjoyable because we have money coming in, but at the same time, we can make a lifestyle out of it and do it as long as we want in a sense, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was the whole idea, I guess, of bringing the channels together. And mm -hmm. it's really not been that difficult. Like we're, we work really well as a team yeah. anyways. And like, because we have three videos a week, usually mm -hmm. like, I'll edit one, he'll edit one, all you know, like we kind of we'll swap we on still one edit our own individual videos kind of thing. So like I'll edit a whole video and then he'll watch and give maybe like one or two, oh, the music's Pointers. too loud there, or you know, cut that bit out, mm -hmm. or you know, whatever. But so we're still kind of like working separately, but then now all of our efforts are going to the same goal, which is growing F and A van life. Yeah, and at the same time we're also working on the other channel, which is my old channel, which is now this van girl, that van guy, and we're gonna put like all that's you guys. Things. Yeah, it's us as well. Yeah, it's my old snowboard channel. Yeah, because okay, I saw that as another channel. Like, like when I was looking at your YouTube channel, and you know, it says other channels. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. Have to Check that out. <laughs> yep, that, yeah. that's us. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, so that's two channels of the yeah. both of you. They're both of us. So we haven't put anything up on Frankie's channel in a while, but yeah. we're, we have a couple videos kind of like ready to go that we just need to like put out. Yep. So we're going to start doing more stuff on his channel and then kind of growing both. We met um, a really big YouTuber recently who is very successful and he was like, you have to have two channels. Yeah. Like you have to be growing two channels at once. Like, Basically, the way he explained it is that if for any reason YouTube decided that they wanted to demonetize you, you need to have a way of you know creating that money revenue somewhere. Or like else. having a second or having channel, a second channel that's, that's not impacted well. by the review of the first channel. Correct. It's, it's kind of like an insurance policy, I guess. Yeah. To yeah. have the both, yeah. but then for us also, it's like a it's a way to put out other videos that don't necessarily fit in our weekly schedule. Yeah. Like, for instance, you guys know that we have done a lot of work on our van and we, we've been like, we just have breakdowns left and right. It seems like, so we're going <laughs> to wind up putting out all the videos on like how to change parts and things like that on that channel where it really doesn't fit in this channel, you know, um, oh, so more of the how to stuff more yeah. like how -to and like, maybe like, uh, daily life like more time lapse type of, and then you know, I think we're going to maybe videos. move the recipes over to that channel. Yeah. And then oh. try something different for the Monday videos. And then we can do more Map It Mondays on that channel. It's kind of just going to be a mixed bag, mm -hmm. um, which is fun because then there's no pressure to like, like on our channel right now, it's like we have to have a van tour every Wednesday. And like we got to mm -hmm. figure out who was van so there's, tour. There's a van tour like, every Wednesday. There's a vlog every Saturday. And then Monday is still our videos. That's like we don't know what we're doing yet. We're sort of just figuring it out as we go. We're seeing what really gets the best type of – uh, views and and what people enjoy yeah interaction yeah. you know because really we want to put out videos that are uh for you guys you know we want we want everybody out there to see and go oh i love this and i want to learn more about it you know yeah. and and that's really what it's about it's about putting out content for them you know so we we live in it and we have fun with it but it's really for everybody else to learn more you know yeah. and have fun <laughs> It sounds like you guys have found a way to make that mesh really well. That's that's really good. Yeah, yeah. We, we like to think we have. <laughs> <laughs> you tell us. If you're enjoying the videos, then that's Oh, my God. Cool. I love watching you guys. You're so real. And it's like not everything is perfect. Like I, you're showing your shower and the sink is leaking. And I literally I started laughing out loud. It was yeah. just. The way you presented it too is so funny. I just oh, love that's it. so sweet. Yeah, yeah we just want to wing it and go. Gorgeous. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, it's honestly we didn't. I mean, we had like a vision of what it was going to be before we started building. But it wasn't like, really this. It wasn't really this, and just kind of you know things happen, and you know someone helps out, and then it turns into this, and then it just kind of evolved. And then like we recently kind of added a bunch of stuff to like make it feel more like a home. And so it's kind of like, it's evolved and it's nice. And like, yeah. we feel super comfortable in here now. You're bringing macrame back. <laughs> I'm, like surrounded by it. <laughs> so how are the plants doing? When I saw you were going to do macrame, I thought you were going to hang all your plants in them. Like they used like in my grandma's house back in the day. 
Well, yeah, I wish I could, but it's when you're driving, it. your plants it's would just like slam against the wall. The plants are doing really good, actually. They're doing great. This one actually has a couple new uh, new leaves and stuff coming in. And you want to share their names with everyone? Yeah, sure. Exactly. Um, this is Frank. Okay. Sinatra. <laughs> Frank yeah. Sinatra. This is Elvis because he's got the big hair. <laughs> uh, we have uh, this is uh, Audrey uh, Hepburn. This is Cher. No last name. Just share. Just share, Just share. obviously. Um, this is Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> and then this is Fred Astaire. Oh, I love the names for them, you yeah. guys. That's and so he's the cool. only one with a real pot. We went and bought a bunch of pots, but as it turned out, we didn't measure anything and none of them fit except for that one. Typical FNA van lifestyle, yeah. you know, no measure, just wing it. <laughs> yeah, but we bought them all at like the Goodwill and stuff, and so we couldn't really return them. So we were like, eh. and then the one I tried to keep to do something else with, um, and then it rolled off the counter and smashed into a million pieces. Yeah, so, good. Aw. Yeah. You no, know, you had brought up about all the breakdowns and stuff, and I was wondering, you know, like when people are a couple and they're traveling, that can make or break a relationship. But then you add the breakdowns. Like, how do you guys even handle that? Because that would be high stress. I mean, no, we are just like generally really good at not fighting with each other. So here's my thing is like the breakdown isn't her fault in any type of way. It's not right. my fault in any type right. of way. Right. You know, it's, it's realistically, it's something that's going to happen. And whether we take the, you know, the road of badgering each other for it, you know, cause we're just angry that it's happened. It's definitely like a high stress situation oh, for sure. and like, you know, if he's like, I need a, I need a rag. I'm, I'm like, I'm going to go get the rag, you know, yeah. like, and I don't, I'm not going to take it personally that like, you didn't say please when yeah. you asked. <laughs> I'm like, what? Like, so rude. How dare you? You can yeah. also see that I sort of get a little bit Well, frustrated. he's like freaking out and like, like, he's the only one who knows how to fix it or like yeah. to figure out what's going on. So I'm just like, what can I do to help this go better? You know? Yeah. And then I'm not going to be like, oh, Frank, you did a terrible job. Like. <laughs> yeah. you know, like we got rolling again so, and that's so like what even on our most recent vlog uh at the very end we we break down and and that, that really happened you know nothing was set up and a, a hose literally popped off of our uh radiator that we thought was on there tight i mean it was running for about a week and a half and then all of a sudden the hose popped off so it was like just crazy that it happens and then luckily we were meeting another YouTube couple, which was Mr. and Mrs. Adventure. And okay. they happened to pull in front of us to, you know, fill us up. They were a minute behind us, luckily. They filled our engine and up they, from their water from tank. From their water tank. So we were able to get the hose back on while it's piping hot. And then they fill us up, you know, and, and we're good to go. Yeah. So it's like, if we had these bad negative feelings, we they probably would have been up where we were supposed to meet them with no service. And then we would have been stuck. Oh, you know? no. Like, you know, there's a lot of other things that could have happened, but I feel like because we have these positive outlooks on stuff, things just tend to, like, work out for us a little bit better, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, I don't know, it's just like um, when you when you say something that comes to light, you know, it just, like, happens. It's sort of like that. If you when have you a good, speak it into your life. Mindset. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah. Good for you guys. My goodness. So what would you say is the best part of van life? Uh, the freedom of it in the sense of just being able to be in nature and away from sort of the noise of the world, I guess. Um, and just being out here pre appreciating our planet that we live on, that we've inherited, you know, and, and being able to um, just see it in all its glory and beauty. And I feel like now a lot of people get that opportunity you know, because everybody's so busy in their nine to five or families or whatever it is that you're doing. You're so consumed by that. It's hard to, you know, be present um, a lot of the time. And we get we get the opportunity to be present often. Mm -hmm. I That's think it's lot. really a lot about like who we're meeting to. Mm -hmm. Like we've made some really amazing friends along the way and just like met random strangers in parking lots. And, you know, we've met up with some people from Instagram who turned out to be really awesome. And, yeah. you know, it's just been like really nice to like meet random people all over the country and everybody's really nice people like yeah. in the in almost the year that we've been traveling we've had maybe like 
two negative people that we met that yeah. was like, wow. Um, but the other, you know, 99% of people are all awesome. Yeah. It just gives you like a bit more perspective on the fact that a lot of us are more on the same page rather than being on a different page than like what social media or the news might put out there. You know, uh, um, there's a lot of good in the world. Yeah. And I think that being in damn life has showed us that, yeah. you know, like anytime, you know, if we've had a breakdown and we go to the mechanic, the mechanic is like, Oh, I did the work for free because you know, I, I couldn't fix, fix it all it. the way. Or like, you know, like people have been really generous to us mm -hmm. and we've just had a really nice opportunity to meet good people. And it kind of opens up your eyes. Cause I think a lot of people when they start traveling are like, worried or afraid or scared because you know it's the unknown and it's a stranger or you know whatever but like to us anyways it seems like most people are really friendly yeah. and are happy to help and you know could be your new best friend i think we bank on the opportunity of of people being kind to us you know like we're at the mercy of everybody around us in a sense like you're looking for people to be nice to allow you to park in places mm -hmm. they're looking for people to be nice to you know offer something at some point in time to help you out as well as we do to other people you know but it could just be something as small as like just a nice conversation you yeah. know uh because we're not around our friends and our families that we have every day to have that and because of all this covid connection. stuff you know we haven't been able to go back you know yeah. like you know, our our original plans involved a lot more people seeing. Yeah. Um, whereas now it's kind of like, it's will you be able to get back for the holidays or will you not? Well, I mean, yeah. I, for us, if you really think about it, our families, my mom is in Florida, which is one of the worst statistical places, I guess, in the moment for COVID. Um, New York, which was one of the worst statistical places in, you know, America for COVID and the world, I think. Uh, and then her family's in Canada. So and for the us border to being cross closed. the border, it's almost yeah. impossible right now until we, you know, have common law or are married. Mm -hmm. So you guys are hoping that the rules don't change too much so that you can at least get into Canada for Christmas? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, obviously if the border was just open to American citizens, yeah, then Frankie could have by no problem. Yeah. Um, obviously, there's other ramifications for that. And, you know, a lot of the people and friends that I have in Canada don't really want that, which I get. Yeah. Um, so it just it, it puts like a big question mark on it, because if we could show up with like a stack of paper to prove that we're like common law and all this stuff and they could just say no. Yeah. You know, like. So it's not as simple as just like, here's my passport. Have a nice day. It's Correct. like, please let us in. Like, <laughs> I hope that we did all the things right. Yeah. Like, here's all the proof. Like, you know, it just like adds an extra layer of uncertainty and like stress, I guess, a and little I'm, bit. I'm sure we'll have to like go get tested and things like that. Ooh, yeah. so like, there's a lot of things that wind up get put in place that we have to do just to make it make it there, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and then even like, traveling in America, like you kind of have to know where the cases are because, like, yeah. I don't want to go to a state that's like having an outbreak. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's like, you know, where are we going to travel versus what are the numbers and like where are we going to go? Because, like, you know, in van life, you're still pretty isolated. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we go into the grocery store, but then we come back to the van and, you know, we're on our own in the van and we go into the forest and, you know, enjoy. And, nature per and, and particularly everywhere we go when we're in like a like a city everybody's wearing a mask for the most part like you well know? in the two states that we've been yeah. in for the most of this yeah because it's the law here uh -huh. but then in other states it's not the law so then you might be the minority wearing a mask and then you get questioned a lot and things like that you know it's so just, it's very it's, it's a, a weird very time. interesting time yeah yeah wow Wow. So how long have you guys been doing the van life? Like how long were you doing it together before COVID even hit? So we just, we started traveling December 27th of 2019. So it was pretty, I guess, four months, I guess you could say before everything got shut down. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we were trying to do all the Epic and Icon mountains in North America. So we wound up snowboarding 70 different mountains um, and yeah, we went to 30 different states, two provinces, and we're on the way to making the world like a world record 
for every single epic and icon now in snowboarding in a single season. And uh, then the pandemic hit and shut uh-huh. everything down and stopped us. So we were we had to get to 83 and we made it to 70. Well, and because that's what your channel before was yes. about, right? Yeah. Because you do a lot of that. Yeah, I love uh, – it's like – it's one of my favorite things to do. Uh, I just feel very free when I'm doing it. And I just love the cold weather. It's, you know, it's very strange. I like the cold, but I'm also like a winter baby. So maybe mm-hmm. that's why. But uh, yeah, I just absolutely love being like on the top of a mountain and looking down and going, I have to get down this now safely, you know? And it just brings <laughs> this like adrenaline rush to me. And I, I love that. Oh my gosh. I'm such a prairie girl. I go to the teeny tiny little valleys we have here. And if it's too high, I just sidestep. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, know, I was probably that. more like you at the beginning too, but like I, because we did so many mountains last year and like we started on the East coast where the mountains are a lot smaller. Like there's a couple of big ones, but then the majority of them are more like the prairie hills kind of thing. Whereas now that we're going, you know, when we got to the West Coast, you would take the lift up and it would just be like going, going, going. And then your heart starts racing and you're like, oh my God, like I have to get down this thing now. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of like trial by fire, but I enjoy snowboarding too. Frankie definitely enjoys it a lot more than I do. Um, but that's why we've kind of compromised this year and we're going to do like, you know, not as many mountains. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're definitely going to slow ourselves down. It was just too stressful to try to do every single one. The only way I'll ever attempt that again, if somebody's like, you know, wants to put the money out there to something. sponsor it. That's absolutely only It was chance. so expensive in gas and yeah. then like food because, you know, you're exhausted. So you don't want to cook all the time. So then you end up eating out a lot more, mm. just like grabbing something at the gas station or like whatever. And then so like one month we spent $900 on like, gas. On gas, yeah. Just wow. like places. And like our van's pretty good on diesel. Like uh, we get like almost 21 miles to a gallon. Oh. So we do really well with that. But, you know, and how hard and how like we were snowboarding, you know, four mountains in a day when we were in like Ohio and Michigan. They're smaller mountains, but you're traveling the distance of the whole state, you know, in a single day. You have a diesel heater in there, don't you? Yes, we do. Yeah. Is that tapped into your diesel tank? Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah, that was a ridiculous amount, but it's winter too, so you're using it to heat and to travel. Yes, yeah. yes, correct. Yeah. So we actually yeah. during the winter time we get more like 18 miles to the gallon because of the heater. Uh, it's running most of the day in the winter time. I mean, it overheats this space a lot, so we wind up shutting it off quite often. Uh, just when you have those like ridiculously cold days, it has to stay on all day. We don't long. have a thermostat on it. Yeah. So we can't set it to be like, okay, at 70, turn off. So we'll turn it on and then we'll wake up in the middle of the night, like sweating. <laughs> yeah. And we're like, oh God, turn it off. And then in the morning you wake up and it's freezing cold. So then you got to start it again and like get the whole thing. But uh, I think we're, th- we're talking about getting another one and we're going to install it in the back and then we're going to pay more for the one with the thermostat. Yeah. Okay, yeah, because the thermostat one will be the one closest to your bed, so you're really going to want to make sure that that's regulated well. Yeah, Uh and that'll be the one, too, that will keep our plumbing from freezing. From freezing. So even when we're gone from the van for a significant amount of time, we could set it at, like, 40 degrees. Yeah, 55 degrees. So that the plumbing will never freeze, because that's we had a couple of problems with that last winter, especially, like... Uh, even, you know, we would just be driving. So you'd have the, the heater off and you'd be in the front and, you know, you're blasting your heat in the front, but then the, the back of the van gets very cold. And then the back yeah. doors are a bit drafty. So then like all the plumbing would be frozen by the end of the drive. It was, uh, it was hectic for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. Cause your water, all your water is under the, gr- in the garage in the back. Correct. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. So now that, it is in the back. We really, when we put this first heater in, we should have put it in the back. That way, it heated both spaces without, you know, without having to worry about putting the heat trace in. Because now we use more energy, you know, with the heat trace, the electric heat trace, uh, mm-hmm. rather than just having a heater in the back with it. 
But you know, you watch so many other builds and everyone builds it in under that seat. That just is yep. like, oh, the natural thing to do. You think because everyone else has done it, it must be the way. Yes, yeah. correct, exactly. And that's that's the good and bad thing about YouTube University in the sense, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you just, oh, sorry. I mean to cut you off, but like most of the time when you film a van tour, especially if you're filming your own, you film it like right as soon as you're done building it. Correct. So you haven't actually spent a whole winter in the van or a whole summer or like, so you don't really know what's good and what's not, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. So like even, you know, our original van tour, we'd been traveling for maybe like a month, a month and a half when we did it. Two or three. Cause we, yeah. were, we were in uh, like Idaho. Idaho by the time. So it had to be February already. Yeah. So, but anyway, so, you know, we look back on that and there's things that we've changed since then to make the, you know, the van more comfortable or ergonomic or just like friendly, work yeah. better mm -hmm. for our lives. So we're like, we need to do another van tour to like, show like okay here's what we did wrong yeah, this correct. is what you should be thinking about you know <laughs> yeah what not to do even though you see it everywhere else right <laughs> yeah exactly but you guys have done a lot of tours like now that you've seen so many other units and stuff what kind of other things do you like what have you gotten from them that you kind of wish or plan to incorporate in your build uh, I guess just the, the user friendliness of some of them. Like, um, I, I think we would have more of like a half a shower instead of just sort of like the bucket. I think that would be one thing. I think like we would countertop. probably have a different bed set up also because we designed the beds for the bikes, but now the bikes live outside. And then, but you can't sit up in bed. And you think that that's not going to be a good deal, like, you know, not going to be a big deal. But it's really nice to be able to sit all the way straight in your bed. Yeah, because yeah. then you have like, you have more than one typical workstation. You would have the bed area as a workstation. You have the seat that was sitting in as a workstation. And then eventually when we get a swivel seat, yeah. that could be a workstation. I think one of the most important things is having many different areas to kind of sit and work and like, yeah. because- And host. And host, yeah. Like if you, like now that we have this new table set up, we can have two or three people on the couch, one person person's sitting here there. and then a person sitting in the front. And still like an accessible refrigerator. Yeah, you know. so like, before our couch was super uncomfortable because the cushions were weird. And then like this was completely blocked off. So then literally you could only sit here and then we could never sit across from each other. We couldn't sit a meal. down and eat, you know? So there's a lot of little things. It's just like uh, the, the user friendliness and the little layout details. Mm -hmm. that, and like, even though two vans could look exactly the same layout wise, they're completely different. Really? Like, you know, yeah, there's several things in the build that are completely different that make it more user friendly. You know what I mean? Huh. Like yeah. that cabinet instead of storage is where they keep their toilet or that cabinet yeah. is, you know, not just where your plumbing is. It's also like a drawer that comes out or something, yeah. you know, like mm -hmm. having all these like little storage nooks, I feel like is really important too. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. I feel like we've seen a lot of really well-designed rigs and then also some pretty you know basic. mediocre <laughs> you're trying to find a nice word <laughs> oh, but, yeah. and i guess i guess that comes down to like budget friendly too you know what i mean because mm -hmm. and th that's a big reason why we do all these different type of van tours because there's people with a 600 dollars budget and there's people with a hundred and fifty thousand dollar budget so you have all these different budgets all over the place so we really want to show what you could have if you have five hundred dollars and what you can have, you have the cream of the crops and everything in between, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And you don't want, like, I think even with mine, I don't want to put too much money into it yet because I am constantly changing stuff. But I love how you did the wood. Yeah. Thank the you. Wood. That was yeah. kind of by kind accident of a, yeah. a little bit. It worked out, though. I originally, I wanted to paint all the cabinets blue was my plan. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but then a friend of ours, built the first big cabinet in here and i mean there's no way he's watching this but he really screwed the pooch on it he, yeah it like, wasn't good he gave him <laughs> these like specs of like we had it all drawn out exactly where everything we sat with him cuts, for like 45 everything. minutes of like okay the toaster oven's gonna fit in here it's this dimensions the fridge is gonna slide like this it's da 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 yeah he's like got it got it no problem great we come back and we're like 
this is all wrong. Yeah. This is bad. And we're like, the cutout's not even in the right spot, you know? So he yeah. did the cutout. He did two drawers instead of a cutout, and then, like, all the cabinet doors were, like, were popped janky. out. They were So all the cabinet so doors bad. weren't, like, flush. And for things to be flush in a van, I feel like it's very important. So you don't mm -hmm. bang your knees or anything on those little corners. You don't catch stuff on the corners. So we wanted everything inside. So I just told the kid, like, listen, here's the money, you know, for the trade-off that we did. And I'm going to just finish it myself. But so, the one good thing that came out of it is that he was really into burnt wood. Yes. So he burned the whole giant cabinet and, as, like, burnt wood. And Frankie says to me, like, what do you think about it? And I was like, I fucking hate uh, it. Yeah, she just looked at me like, <laughs> no. And I'm just like, listen, Alex, give it time when we add some stuff to it. <laughs> we'll create some change and things around it that will really make it like pop and I look good. I was so mad. I was like, this sucks and it's awful. <laughs> terrible yeah. like he's like don't worry it'll be okay but like i think because of that like we made everything on top really white and light so mm -hmm. that like you have the dark on the bottom and then because like once you commit to this you're kind of committed to yeah. it every, you know like i'm not gonna have a blue cabinet on this side and a burnt wood cabinet on this side yeah like, that would just be weird it was just you know we're in it now so <laughs> Yeah. So we went all in with the burnt wood and we kept burning everything. And then next thing you know, <laughs> and then Alex it became kind of everything. fun to just like take the blowtorch out and be like, Rrr. Alex <laughs> burned almost every part in this van. Let's put it that way. It was like my rage like, exercise. <laughs> like, I'm just going to burn this one extra crispy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, that's sad, but it's so funny the way you guys <laughs> describe stuff. Like, this is what everybody needs to know about your channel. Oh, yeah. You. Yeah. I mean, and that, that's what it's all about, you know, sharing the little details of, like, all the stuff that happened and why it became this, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we're, we're fortunate, you know? I like it now. Yeah, it's beautiful now. Yeah. I think the only thing that I would do different is having, like, a more, like, a marble -y or countertop or some kind of, like, live edge counter. Yeah. yeah. Oh. The, she doesn't want the two-by-fours anymore. Uh -huh. <laughs> two-by-fours held together with glue. Yeah. <laughs> I love in your what your van tour and you're like and people wonder how we get into bed and you do your business. <laughs> yeah. Frankie literally just did that like an hour ago. I was like, show him how you do it, and then he like broke something on the way up again. And we're like, Frank. every time I do it, I break something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. I I guess I should ask first, but how old are you guys? I'm 33. And I'm 31. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We're no spring chickens. Yeah, we're we're <laughs> we're in the middle a bit for all the van lifers. I feel like there's a lot of young ones, and then there's some older ones. So we're sort of in the middle. I feel like. You know? Do you feel like it makes a difference on how you connect with other nomads? A little, oh, bit, a little bit, because we can sort of connect on both ends of the spectrum. I feel like you know. But we, I think most of the people that we've actually connected with really like deeply. and then we're gonna are all much older, older. than us yeah. yeah yeah so i mean like i don't know why that like some of the younger people will like meet them but then they they're i mean i don't want to like throw people in a bucket but like they're a little bit more flaky and they're like a little bit le like oh like let's hang out and then you know you don't hear from them ever again or yeah. like you know something like that where it's like the older couples are like let's do it like you know we'll meet here at this time and this day and then you actually get it get to spend some good time with them and connect and yeah like we're actually we're gonna go probably meet back up with uncle kevin in the next little bit um the burnt stuff does get dirty if you rub against it not if you only if, if you don't polyurethane you have to polyurethane it. it so burning it is uh just to like seal it make it mildew uh mold free waterproof and burn proof and then you polyurethane it to give it that and then nice, that and then you won't nice get dark up. like when we had just burnt it, you touch it, you'll get soot, you'll get on, soot you. on your fingers. But yeah. once you polyurethane it, it's all, it's all like stuck in. in there. Yep. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. yeah. Really but good. Yeah, we have a couple of like younger friends too. I don't know. Like, so Frankie and I both worked for like a decade in like corporate America, America um, which actually I think put us in a good place to do van life because our finances were all set mm -hmm. and like, you know, we were in a good place. Like, mentally and emotionally yeah. and like our relationship is really good like um so i feel like that 
us being a little bit older makes van life a little bit easier mm -hmm. in a sense because like we know what we like we know how we want to travel we know how to communicate with yeah. each other and other people outside of just us too you know right like we we've been through you know a bunch of different places communicating with tons of different people especially in new york city you know it's there's so many people around you you have to communicate all the time i feel like you know what a great channel they have. We're excited to watch all them videos. Yeah. Uh, Thank you so much. It's addicting. It is so addicting. Hit the playlist, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> we love that. I feel like it's so nice to meet new people because, you know, I feel like YouTube can be a little bit of a bubble. Like, it'll throw you the same people, and, and you know? Over. So it's nice to, like, meet new friends and, like, you know, I feel like Bob is who connected you, us, yeah. right? Bob's Adventure on Wheels. What about I know him, but I found you guys separately. Oh, you found oh okay. Separately. Yeah. Okay. And then I, feel like I was talking to him because we do message, and then he was like, "Oh, I just met them," and I'm like, "What?" Yeah, he's well, such a not do an interview with them first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah. Bob and Van Life Vagina, they were the first ones together that interviewed me for my very oh, first wow. time on the live stream. And that's how I learned to do it at all. So I can thank them awesome. for that. I love the fact that they, they really share uh, what they do in their community. And they're so well connected. Just, and like yeah. you as well, I feel like. I'm, you know, just from watching Bob, you know, closely for a long time, mm -hmm. more than we've, you know, we've just met you a couple weeks ago, <laughs> but um, Bob is really good at like, like he's got new guests all the time. Yeah. Every day. I'm like, where are these people coming from? Like, he's really digging, you know, like, <laughs> I, I'm like you are doing a great job and like you as well. Like you've got new guests every day. And it's like, I feel like that's got to be hard. <laughs> At first it was because I'm yeah. working full time from home. And then okay. I swear it was more hours trying to learn everything. And I'm still learning. But I mean, if you watch even two months ago to now, there's hopefully, in my opinion, a big improvement. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Always. And, that's, and that goes for everybody doing this. You know, there's a big learning curve at first. And, and even now, like even Alex and I, we're still learning every day. You know, we and the videos get better every month, you yeah. know, like you look back at a video from two months ago and you're like, oh, man, I would have done that differently, yeah. you know. And I'm sure you have the same feelings about what, what you do now. You know, uh, you, there's just things that you learn that you're like, oh, I would never do that again. You know, yeah. and, and but it's way better it. to just get out there and just do it. Yeah, because I feel like it's never going to be perfect. and It's always going to be evolving. And like even like, you know, the biggest YouTubers with millions of followers, their videos are still evolving and getting mm -hmm. better or different or whatever yeah. and so i think a lot of people you know are maybe a bit afraid or like they have the perfectionist thing about like oh like if my video is not perfect i'm not putting it like out this transition doesn't obviously work. that's not my problem yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean i'll see the we, no. we, we we're put just it like out. throw like, it, just put it out throw there. It. If By the time like we're it, done editing, cool. sometimes we've like just watched the video so many times, and like you go and fix one, and you're like, I'm like, should we watch it again just to make sure that we didn't screw the whole thing up? And we're like, no, just, <laughs> just roll just it. Just let it like, go. I don't even care anymore. Like it'll be like midnight, and we're like, come on, like I just want to be done, you know? So <laughs> um, I'll tell you what, that's the one thing about this, uh, you know, YouTube thing is it's a lot of work, and like you know. I, I hope everybody out there knows how much work it is. It's not, you know, you have to film, you have to have the idea, film it, film it good enough to, to edit it in a shorter period of time because it takes a long time. You have 200 clips of all different types of things. That's like four hours of video that you have to go through and cut down to this, you know, 20 minute video, you know, mm -hmm. so you gotta watch that stuff over and over and all that stuff. It's a, it takes a lot of work, you know? So I, I just, I like to say that I'm proud of everybody out there that's doing stuff like this. You know, you guys, uh, you know, anybody else that's making videos in general, it's just, it's a, it's a really cool thing to do and it takes a ton of work. So kudos to everybody out there that does it. Well, and you guys are doing it on two channels. Well, wow. we're trying, we're trying, <laughs> we're getting it. We're, we're going. But so like for us though, like this is our full-time job now, yeah. right? So, and we want it to be our full-time mm -hmm. job. Like, you know, 10 years from now, if we could still say that, you know, all of our bills are covered by YouTube, you know, like amazing. that would be amazing. Yeah. Uh, 
because we love it and we love sharing stories and we love, you know, welcoming people into our lives and we do enjoy editing and, you know, it's all good stuff for us. So, you know, we both work jobs that we liked, but we weren't really like passionate about, yeah. you know, like we were good at, but we didn't love, you know? Yeah. So for us, it's like, well, you know, we're still young and we need a career, you know, you can't just like, I don't even like, you gotta make money. Yeah. <laughs> you know? like, um, so to be able to do something that we really enjoy mm -hmm. and like, yeah, it's still work, you know, but it doesn't feel like it, it doesn't feel like work. And then you can still like the great thing about it is because we're traveling all these beautiful places. You know, you work for a bit in the morning, you go for a beautiful hike, you meet some awesome people, you enjoy, you know, and a great day. Yeah. And then you work for a couple hours in the evening and then you call it a night, you know, like you can set your own schedule. And like, you know, some days we do just sit down and edit all day long because we like, you know, have a deadline and yep. we got to meet it and whatever. Mm -hmm. But like, and then we have we the flexibility the to decide. Yeah. Whereas like my boss used to decide it's 9 a.m. on Monday. It's time to come to work. You yeah. Know? yeah. Yeah. Just dictate your own schedule, I guess. Yeah, there would be a lot of freedom in that. Yeah. So did you guys have a lot of savings before you started? So, yeah, what we did is we took um, a year uh, to save and also build the van out. So we, Alex actually made a whole spreadsheet of just budget stuff and like how we, what, how much money we need to save to do it this way. How much money we need to save to do it that way. Several different ways of doing it. We actually thought about buying like a class B RV at first. We thought about building out an ambulance. We looked at all different types of vehicles. Um, and ultimately, luckily we, you know, found this one and, and built it out ourselves and, and yeah, just the, the, um, the budget was more so how much money could we save to travel for at least one year without worrying about money uh, and, mm -hmm. and being able to do sort of what we want. Cause like at the beginning, like YouTube, I, we both had channels, but neither of them were very making profitable. Like yeah. they were not making it really any money at all. Um, so we're like, yeah, we're going to, you know, spend more time on YouTube and maybe it'll take off, but maybe it won't, you know? And so we want to, travel and enjoy and not worry, you know, what do we need to have in the bank to be able to do that for at least a year? Um, and then any money that we make on YouTube would just be bonus. Yeah, it would replenish that, that, uh, that savings that we have. Yeah. So oh, awesome. Yeah. Oh, how artsy dude um, got here partway through. He was just asking, what was your other channel? What was the uh, name? Of the video? It's called This Van Girl, That Van Guy. And I got to say, I love your channel art. I love that little, uh, it's like the, the, is it like Stella or Dosakis Stella or something like that? Yeah. 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 Very it's interesting. Awesome. Very cool. Oh, that's so good. Um, oh, I had a question just a second ago and it slipped my mind. Um, what do you think is the very best part, though, of van life? Is it that you're together? Is it the meeting people, the travel? It's all it's of it. All Honestly, of it. it's just like a really great lifestyle. Like you are on your own schedule. You're on your own time. You decide where you want to go. The ever-changing backyard is so lovely. And and where in life do you like? If you were walking down the street and you saw somebody's house and you're like, I want to see that house. And you were just like, Hey, you go knock on the door and you're like, Hey, can I see your house? The people would be like, no, we're here in van life. Everybody's like, yeah, man, come see it. Like, check it out. Everybody's like <laughs> super prideful about the lifestyle, you know? And it just, it, I don't know. It just gives off this great positive energy that just makes you feel good to be alive. You know? Oh, you describe it so beautifully. Can, yeah. How did you guys meet? So we actually met on Bumble, which is like a dating website. Um, so it's an app. It's one of those yeah. swipey apps. Yeah, it's one of those little swipe apps. So in this app, though, particularly, you can match, but the woman has to start the conversation. So it just makes the woman feel a bit more comfortable. And, and then you don't get a lot of, like, skeevy, like, hey, babe. And, like, bad pictures <laughs> and things like that. You know? yeah. So, so, yeah, so we actually were each other's first date on the Bumble app, and... Yeah, I mean, I didn't was, go on any others. Yeah, me neither. And then yeah. it was history from there. We just continued to hang out every day. And we had a wonderful date that wound up being like 11 hours rather than like two hours like we thought it was going to be. And ever since that day, we basically continued to hang out. And then our relationship grew. And, mm -hmm. you know, there was really never a date where I was like, can you be my girlfriend? 
You know, but... I think you maybe asked. Maybe, I don't, I don't know. know. I think actually you just said that I was your girlfriend in front of your friends or something. And she was like, oh, "I'm your girlfriend." Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like it was. I don't know. It just seemed like everything worked out perfectly. Like I would had just like left a really bad toxic relationship, and he was just getting over an injury, and so both of us had like just gotten you know, and been like, okay, like now is the time to start dating. Yeah. And then we connect with each other immediately. And then, you know, six months later, we're talking about buying a van. And then a few months after that, we buy a van. And yeah. then, you know, six months after that, we're, you living know, in living van in the together, van and on the road. Right. So now we've been together for like two and a half years. Yeah. The, it's, it's been it was, beautiful and it's been like super, I almost feel like we're both very fortunate for meeting each other. Cause we both needed somebody like each other in our lives. So yeah. you know, like where, where she may lack, I pick up and where I may lack, she picks up, you know, and, and we just compliment each other very well. And it, and it, you know, we, we talk to each other, we communicate all the time because if you don't communicate, your relationship's not going to work, mm -hmm. you know? So you just got to be open-minded and, and especially in a van because there's nowhere to like escape, yeah. you know, yeah, like, what do you do for personal space? Uh, you don't. We don't. I mean, when the winter's here, snowboarding for me is sort of that time. Or like um, you know, if, if I don't know, like honestly, we don't really spend that much time apart. Yeah. Um, we like each other. We do like each other, and like if we do have an argument or something like that, it's usually like, you know, I'll say like even you know like an hour ago, you know, we were talking about something, and he got a little riled up, and then I got a little riled, you know, and then it was like, it was like what is happening right now? Like, why are you frustrated? And he's like, well, this is why. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm sorry. And like, you know, I don't mean it, you know, it's just like, I tell you when I'm upset and why, and then you respond, yeah. you know? And so we just try to like do that all the time. Nine out of 10 times it's food related. Yeah. He's like, and so also just, I'm really hungry. Just for like, each other. Okay. <laughs> Since he did all the cooking on the channel before, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I she love cooking. Like we, we're parked outside of Whole Foods uh, right now because they have good Wi-Fi. So we, I popped in there and I was actually going to buy something to go because I was starving, which was also why we were probably, you know, at each other's. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going to buy something. And then I was like looking at it and it was like $8 just for like a sandwich. Thank you, parent student advocate. That's really sweet of yeah, you. Yeah, we try to have a good relationship. It's, it's definitely like you have to try. You yeah. Know, like. Well, because in the van, if you're like, what am I going to storm off and then be in a neighborhood that I've never been in before and be like, eh, you know? like where you going? I guess if you wanted to go for like a hike in the woods or something, you could. Yeah, or like a swim in a lake or just yeah, like, or like a take job, the dog, like if you're take, a runner or something. Take the dog for a walk. I don't know. There's so many different ways. How do you get away from your spouse and your, like when you're living together? You do all the same things. You know, it's just yeah. you, can't, you can't really go to a different room in the house. That's the only And there's difference. no room in yeah. here to let things like like brew yeah you know like you gotta put it on the table fairly quick. yeah because like i feel like if i was just like angry about something and then i was just like mean to him for like a few days like how horrible is that like we're supposed to be on vacation having a good time yeah. you know like well i'd rather just mm -hmm. be like hey what you said frustrated me and he'll be like oh i didn't mean it that way and i'll be like okay cool let's move on so i you think know? i think another thing that takes away from that dynamic of fighting all the time is the fact that you guys aren't stressed out from like work per se so like we don't we're not stressed out from traveling to and from work. We're not stressed out because we just had a hard day at work due to the fact of like whatever it is that you're doing that day or listening to somebody else's, you know, hard times or whatever it is, you know. Mm -hmm. We we have a lot more opportunity to fulfill our own wants and needs, you know, rather than do what somebody else is telling you to do. You know, mm -hmm. so I think that helps with the dynamic of not really fighting often. I also noticed you guys don't cut each other off at all. You totally wait till the other has finished what they are saying. Yeah, that might come with the whole video thing. <laughs> like the fact that we make videos, we have to always like give each other their time and opportunity to speak and uh, say what needs to be said. And then the other person could sort of play off of that or, you know, even disagree if they want to, you know. So, or usually what ha I'll be like, Frank, you need to say that all the way from the beginning again because yeah. you've made no sense. <laughs> that happens a lot. Especially if he's working on the van or something because he's like, he like gets in this mode where it's like, 
pulley, oil, engine, yeah. fire, like what? And I'm like, that is, you know, now that you know what you want to say, could you say it again in like a coherent yeah. sentence? So that everybody can understand. Yeah. And he's like, oh, okay, yeah, uh, let's yeah. do it. <laughs> I'm like, my bad. All right, let's go again. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God, you guys are so cute. So Frankie, when you're doing all your snow sports, Alex, what are you doing? So I'll usually snowboard passion? a little bit, like depending on the weather, I'm kind of like a, I like to snow when the conditions are good, kind of snow, you know, yeah. the snow is nice and it's not icy and the weather is, you know, pretty, you know, I'm in. I'll mm -hmm. usually snowboard for like the first half of the day. If it's really good, I'll snowboard the whole day. Um, but usually... If I do snowboard, then at lunch, I'll come back, I'll make us lunch, and then Frankie will leave again to go do whatever he wants. Um, or And then I'll be in the van, I'll do yoga, I'll meditate, I'll write in my journal, I'll edit a video, I'll go for a walk, I'll go, you know, some of the um, resort towns have little, like, uh, you know, kiosks or, like, shops, or, mm -hmm. you know, you can kind of, like, little villages, I guess you mm -hmm. would say. So, like, I'll wander in a village. I feel like you do quite a bit of yoga. Yeah, yeah just because especially when we were snowboarding so much last season, and like, traveling. my body was hurting, you mm -hmm. know? So just mm -hmm. to come back to the van and roll out the yoga mat and, like, get nice and warm by the, you know, heater and, you know, just, like, make a nice cup of tea and have, yeah. you know, some, that would be like my personal time, you know? Yeah. And I feel like last year I needed it a lot more. Cause I think too, like we went from, you know, building the van working full time, which was very stressful. And like, you have no free time, right? Cause like mm -hmm. you commute to work, you work all day, you commute home, you work on the van, you go to bed, you wake up, you do it again. And then you wake up on the weekend and the whole weekend you're van building because it's a lot of, like, you know, it's, it's a really big yeah. project. Right. And we had a timeline and blah, blah, blah. So then when we finally get on the road and we're like, okay, now we have to do all these mountains. Like don't relax. <laughs> Woo. Sorry. We we don't have any cash on us. Sorry, buddy. Sorry. Come here, buddy. Hey, it's all part of van life, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Like a deal. yeah. On, but, but yeah, so the door is open though. Our door is open. Yeah. Oh, but it's warmer where you are than I'm where I am. It's yeah. hot. It's hot. We were here. literally sweating. It was it was like ninety degrees. Now that degrees. the sun has gone down a bit, I I can hang. But like yeah. previously, no. It was about ninety degrees Fahrenheit when we pulled up over here. Yeah, so it was bad. It was fairly warm. And the sun was like right there. Yeah. But yeah, so then we jumped into the snowboarding stuff and then that was really busy and stressful because we had this itinerary that like we had to hit all 83 of these mountains. So it was literally like go, 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 go all the time. And I feel like I went from like a go, go, go van build to a go, go, go van life. And I was like, where is this relaxing, peaceful, <laughs> like Instagram van yeah. life that everybody's selling? Like, I don't get it. We're not living it. I'm so stressed out. I'm tired. I'm achy. Like, I'm cold all the time. Um, so it was at the beginning of it, I definitely needed that, you know, alone time more. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But now I feel like that we've been doing more like summertime and we've slowed down. Like, the one nice thing about the pandemic. Um, and I got to say thanks to Van Life Rocks who keeps sharing our YouTube channel yeah, link. Thank you, thank so, you much. so much. Van Life Rocks. Uh, for me. Our channel. Yes. Um, yeah. But yeah, so COVID really made us slow down. And so because we couldn't go, go, go to all these mountains, we kind of were like, okay, we'll go here. And then, you know, we stayed there for like a month and then, you know, you move a little bit and you stay there for like two weeks and then you move a little bit. And then, and then this is, I feel like more like the van life yeah. that you think about when you think about van more picturesque life. van life. I guess the only thing that uh, would be uh, great is if we didn't have any van issues right now, then we would be we living that van typical issues. van life lifestyle. Yeah. I feel like. But hey, you know, you can't wait a all. Isn't van long. issues part of typical van life? They just don't I show think up. So. Yeah, that's true. You yeah, know, you're right. It is. Because you're putting a lot of miles on the car and, you know, you're really running it and mm. you have a heavy load. Yeah. That's the thing, mm -hmm. too. You've always got a heavy load. Yeah, you always tell so something. So it's, it's definitely difficult for the engine. I think we pushed her really hard through snowboard season. <sighs> like, we really only had one major issue during snowboard season. And then we pushed through, we pushed through, we pushed through. And then after that, that's when we were like, Oh, yeah. 
now we need to like address all of these problems. Yeah, and we made that attempt and hopefully everything works out, you know, when it comes to that, so. <laughs> Um, going green, mom had a question for you guys. What kind of bikes do you have and are they your main transportation when you're parked somewhere? Um, they are not our main tra uh, transportation when we're parked somewhere. They are more for just fun and leisurely like things. Uh, we have two mountain bikes. Alex's bike is actually from Walmart. Yeah. It's like an $80 <laughs> bike. And I only bought a bike because Frank had a bike and I yeah. was like, I guess I need a bike, but I have, I don't want to invest any money in a yeah. bike. Because bikes are very expensive. His oh, yeah. bike was like eight hundred dollars. Yeah. I'm like, I don't have eight hundred dollars for a bike. I got, I got one hundred dollars. And I had that bike. <laughs> You're the one that does the budgeting. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Correct. So yeah. I had that bike previous to even meeting Alex, and at that time, I probably only used it like three times. So uh, that one's a specialized, which is a very nice. Can bike. you make sure that the um, uh, that the? I think we might have lost. Can you check oh. your phone? Are you there still? Yeah, it's still on the hot spot. Oh, yeah, we can still see you. Oh, okay, good. You, I, you just froze second. there for a second. So I just wanted to make sure that we were still, still going. I still want you guys the same. Okay, great. Yeah, so the bikes, uh, I have like a specialized. Uh, I bought it before the van, and I only used it about three times before we got the van and started building and all that stuff because. Frank was a very impulse purchaser yes, I was. before yeah. I took the purse strings over i had yeah. several items that were not needed i had this thing called the um elif elif which was like a, a it's like a skateboard that's a snowboard that's, a snowboard, that's like but it's powered, electronic. Uh, <laughs> which is like it was like eighteen hundred dollars yeah it was expensive. and he used it like one time well so i bought it during the time i was injured thinking that i would use it in the summer when i got healthy and it would get me ready for the snowboard season. And then my injury sort of lingered longer than I wanted it to, as well as mm -hmm. I just had to, you know, you don't know when you I, get injured. I'm like hearing a lot of excuses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we decided to do van, you know, van life. So when we started doing that, I had no time to do anything except for work and build the van. So, so, but then the good thing about it is we sold a lot of stuff yes. before we moved into the van because as you, you know, it's a much smaller space than your apartment. You have to downsize anyways. You have to decide what's really important and what's not. And so a lot of these, like he had two gaming systems. So, uh, well, one was given to me for free. The other one I bought a while back. But so we sold both of those. We sold that weird snowboard, skateboard thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we sold a lot of stuff. That, you know, we're just like, this is not going to fit in our van. We probably made almost $5,000 off of just selling miscellaneous things that Furniture we didn't need, and, you know, want anymore. You know, just random stuff. I even, like, went so far as to, like, there's an app that you can get where you can scan the backs of books. And video and games. And video games. And then they'll tell you how much they'll pay you for them. And then you box them up and send them away. I made like 200 bucks doing that. Um, wow. Yeah, like I was really like bleeding a stone. I was like, anything in this house yeah. can become money. I just need to figure out how, you know? <laughs> My, the air conditioning books that I had from school, she even so, sold. And I think that was like one of the biggest money makers. Yeah, on, uh, one of them too was thing. like one random video game. Yeah. was like worth 50 bucks. 50 and I was bucks, like, yeah. you are you don't need this anymore. Nope, I didn't even play it. I didn't even play that game at all. <laughs> you guys are so darn cute. Another <laughs> question. So do you guys typically stay in campgrounds or do you boondock? So we boondock as much as possible. Uh, there are times where you have to stay in campgrounds or we've had like, you know, some little breakdowns that we just felt more comfortable staying in the campground because we would have service and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, or like the, uh, another couple that we were with they felt more comfortable yep. staying in a campground. And so we were like, all right, well, we're rolling with you. So whatever you want to do, we're fine yep. with that, you know? So mm -hmm. I like campgrounds. Generally, mm -hmm. they're really nice and comfortable. Yep. And you know you're going to get a good night's sleep. And It's just over time, they can become expensive. Right. So like, yeah. if you're paying $5 a night or $50 a night or $10 a night, depending on wherever you are, that just adds up really quick. Right. So mm -hmm. if you could boondock, um, I would definitely suggest boondocking over it uh, if you have the ability and you're in a place where there's a lot of BLM area or or even like roads. a city, you can usually just find a street to park on. Yeah, like hotels because uh, they normally don't check their parking lot. Casinos, um, 
uh, churches. There's so many different places that you can actually like park and they're not going to tow you. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, obviously, uh, get there late, leave early. You know, those are those are. All and like, the, don't set up your barbecue and like, you know, like especially if you're somewhere you're not. Maybe if it's BLM land and you're in the middle of nowhere and there's nobody around, pull out your whole gear and do whatever you want. Yeah. You know what I mean? But if you're more in like a city setting or you know, mm-hmm. like a Walmart parking lot or something yeah. like that, you know, that's just a one night get through town kind of stop. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Well, you guys are set up for boondocking. You have what? 500 amp hours in your amongst your batteries and 400 so we, amp hours. so we just upgraded the system we're going to make a video about it to grape solar which is a company here in oregon so what's 180 times three so there's 540 watts of solar on the roof and then and then on top of that we have the 500 amp hours of battery but we only have 250 usable amp hours because we have AGM batteries. So you're really only supposed to drain them to 50%. So, um, yeah, so we have yeah. tons of battery storage. We have so much battery storage that we the can't panels fill can't fill it in a single day. So you have to, you know, over time fill it. And then we also have it hooked up to our alternator as well. Okay. So that way mm-hmm. it charges while we drive. So we have two ways to charge our batteries. And I mean, if we stay topped off, we could be off grid for almost like two weeks with, uh, you know, no sun or anything. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah. That's so awesome. Yeah. It gives you so much more freedom. Oh yeah, for sure. If we could change one thing, I would definitely go lithium, you know, for the batteries, mm-hmm. but they're, it's just very expensive to do, uh, to do, uh, lithium. Air conditioning books going green yeah. on that. I used to be an HVAC tech in uh, New York City, so I went through uh, I went through school. Uh, so I went through union school through my company, and so I had those books that I got basically for free from the union school. And yeah, we sold those as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, we are already past an hour. I can hardly believe it. I just I have one more question for you, and then I promise I will let you go so people don't keep coming up to your door that's open. But if you were to give advice to someone that was starting with a YouTube channel, what would be something you would tell them? I would tell them consistency is key. So upload and upload as much as you can um, and learn from each video that you make and watch creators that you like and that create good videos uh, and take tips from them, you know, notice their little cuts and their little, you know, things that they make points of and, you know, just interact with your audience. Those are the biggest things. Mm -hmm. For me, I think it's like, um, being okay with not being perfect at the beginning. We talked a little bit about that earlier, but like, you know, your first video that you put out is never going to be as great, you know, unless you're already like, we were looking at this other channel earlier today and the two of them, you know, before they even started a YouTube channel, had a very successful Instagram. They're both like marketers by trade. They're photographers. They have all the gear that, you know, they know how to edit. Everything is very mm-hmm. like toned in, right? Most yeah. of us don't have any of that experience. Like neither of us came to our YouTube channels with any kind of background in making videos. Yeah. So it's really something that you need to learn and like, learn your editing program and experiment with different cuts and you know learn what you like in an edit like i like my edits really fast and kind of like choppy and i mm-hmm. take out words in between when i think it's like dragging on and i'm like very like where like frank tends to like let the conversation go yeah. and like enjoy and then i'll get in there and i'm like no yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know so it's just like learning, like you said, watching channels, watching channels that edits. do well, that you enjoy. And then becoming a part of the community too, because yeah. YouTube mm-hmm. is a very big community. As you can see from everybody in this chat, you know, all these people are watching your video or watching each other's videos or like, you know, it's like very back and forth. And, you know, mm-hmm. I think that's a really important thing is to just like get involved. It's just like life. If you don't engage with people in real life, you don't make new friends, you know? So same with YouTube, you have to engage with the community to make new friends, you know, be genuine about uh, engaging. Like don't just mm-hmm. be surface level, you know, nobody, nobody likes that. Um, and, and they could read through it. I feel like, yeah, so, really like be yourself, Yeah, be yourself, you know, be funny, ask questions, whatever it is, you know, and, and it will come back to you for sure. Wow. Well, how long have you guys been doing the live streams? I mean, that's one thing too with lives is you're even more vulnerable than you are putting your life out in a video. 
Yeah, for sure. We kind of really just started getting into the live thing. Um, that big YouTuber that we mentioned that we met, he was like, you have to. Well, so his tip that we've kind of been implementing that has been helping our channel grow is that you have to post something every single day. Like YouTube's new algorithm is that you need to be on the platform doing something every single day. Yes. And so whether that's posting a brand new video, putting up a community post, going live setting schedules for for these videos like you're doing uh for yours you know all that stuff gets reached out to the community people that don't follow you see those things now and then are more prone to come in and tagging other people so like for example um oh, yeah. you know like if you were going to put up a community post and share this you would put up the community post and tag us in that community post because now not only your followers are going to see it our followers are going to see it too. Mm -hmm. So, like, we I don't have a community tab yet. I'm not monetized. Oh, yeah. okay. I guess okay. you need a thousand. Yeah. Because yep. I actually tried oh, to tag you, you when I shared this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I tried to tag you when I shared this and I couldn't because it doesn't even pop up yet. But as soon as you get that, every single day, share a community post, share a picture, share a poll, share something. Because, like, we just hit 10,000, which means we're supposed to be able to go do, uh, stories. do stories. But it hasn't popped up as an option for us yeah, so yet. It, it said it could take over a month for it to like. I think it said two months it could take. So we're waiting for that because like the guy said that the algorithm has changed and it favors people who are active on the platform. So if you show up once a week, drop a video, and then don't show up again until the next week to drop a video, they're not going to share yours as much. They're only going to share it during that time that you're active, really. You know, so okay. the way they look at it, the way that they look at it is they want to keep people on their platform they want to build as long as possible and build a community. So if you're on here every day and you're building community and you're keeping people on their platform, that's more mm -hmm. eyes watching their platform and more ad sense and things like that that can be generated inside of YouTube. So it it allows them to then share you because they know that people are staying to watch you. You know. Oh, yeah. wow. That's beneficial yeah. to a lot of us in the oh, chat. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. There's a yeah. lot of creators. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I hope so. Because, well, like, honestly, and we're just learning as we go, too. Mm -hmm. Like, if we hadn't met that guy, we wouldn't know that. And the only yeah. reason he knows that is because he has over 100,000 subscribers. And so I feel like the, the more you have, the more information they give you almost Correct. in terms of, like, or maybe just the more <laughs> you're, like, tuned in to like okay like how am i gonna make this you yeah. know there's also the uh uh youtube uh university whatever tabs that you pull up when you first pull up your home thing yeah. reading and listening uh, reading those posts listening to the videos things like that are very helpful on like what you need to do to grow you know so and like even how to edit your videos better and things like that they have in there so it just depends on what you're needing to learn more of the more information you gather the better you'll get you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well you guys must have been growing really fast like when were you at ten thousand? because you just did your eleven thousand giveaway and you're at 11.6 already yeah so that was actually supposed to be a 10k giveaway but, but then it, we hit 11 it so, grew fast. so fast that we hit 11 yeah. before we could even get the things together yeah so last month we grew, or this last month we grew about almost 3,000 subscribers, but that was due to another channel sharing us, and they did what you call like a love mob, and a bunch of their, yeah, oh, like exactly. yeah. So basically, the guy like was he live. does a live stream, and then he's like, oh, like you guys need to go check out F and A Van Life, and because he's got a hundred thousand subscribers, like I don't know how many he, people were on the live. Yeah, it's like a lot of people. There was like four thousand people watching the live live stream. Yeah, and then he was yeah. like. Oh, like go follow them, and then he did this whole rap about us. Yeah, it was crazy. And, like, it was super it was, cool. Like, like he was like freestyling so funny, about us. The it was funny really part neat. about that freestyle is that he's like, there's a song in the background. It looks like it's sort of like an intermission, but he has our channel up there, and he's like, go get them the 10k, you know. And he's thing. like refreshing our page and being like, go over there and like follow them. Yeah. And you can see it ticking up. And and meanwhile, we hear this rap song in the background. We're thinking it's like a rap song that he just puts up and it's like an intermission, like he made it at some point in time. Yeah. But next thing you know, we hear F&A Van Life. F&A Van Life. And we're like, 
How is F in a I was like, is this lie? This? Like, he didn't know you. This was, like, sporadic. How has he got our name in there already? <laughs> so then he pulls down the channel thing, and there he is rapping the F in a van life stuff and, like, just rapping off the comments of people's names and what they're saying and stuff like that. So he's just really interactive with his uh, community and his platform. So everybody mm -hmm. enjoys it. You know, a lot of people stay on the channel just to listen to the song stuff at the end. It's yeah. catchy. It's really catchy. It's super For like fun. the next five days, I just was like, F it was like popping like, my head. And I was <laughs> like, oh yeah. Uh. I was like, no, Adam, we need to hit you up and get an official F and A Van Life song from you. You know, <laughs> that'd be pretty sweet. Wow. And it's so nice that, you know, and again, another big channel supporting when the smaller than them, like I felt like it was so awesome. You guys are like way bigger than I am. And yet you were willing to come on my little channel. I was like, oh, I mean, the people you are. <laughs> that's what it's all about. I mean, we were there at some point in time. We were there you know? not we were, even that we long ago. A couple months ago. You know, you know? and so. we know the grind of it, you know, yeah. like getting to a thousand and like, so I was actually quite lucky that like, you know how they changed the monetization rules? So I've been making YouTube videos for like four years. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And so I was always monetized because it was, they well, didn't have this new rule until, you know, until maybe two or three years ago. I guess it must have been three years It was years like ago. 100 subscribers because when I had my channel, it was 100 subscribers to get monetized. Okay, when I had I mine, was I was monetized immediately, but I was making like one penny – uh, you know, every three months or something yes. like, you know, like it's like almost not wow. even worth it. Right. Um, but so then they brought out the new rule that you had to have a thousand subscribers to be monetized. And at the time, I think I had like 870. Yeah. So I spent the next 60 days cause they gave notice. They're like, we're changing the rules as of I don't know, like date. October 31st that, you know, you have to have a thousand subscribers. So I spent the next 30 days, hounding every single person I knew, every keyboard. single social media, like, please, like, follow, like, come, come, come. So I got myself over the thousand person threshold before they changed the rules. So I never had to apply to be monetized. Yeah. Okay. So I was like, Phew, like, you know, great. <laughs> I was still only making like, I think, right, but even like, just before we got into van life, my channel was making like, 50 bucks every other month like every month maybe mm -hmm. and like they won't even pay you until you make a hundred bucks yeah so i had to wait every other month to get a paycheck for a hundred bucks sometimes every third month if i didn't <laughs> quite yeah. get it you know and the reason why they switched that up is because they didn't want to have to pay people 34 cents well they wouldn't you, know, you would have or, to get to a hundred dollars yeah, you'd have to get to i think the reason they changed it is because the advertisers got mad about channels that were either posting like stolen content yeah. or posting inappropriate content or and then the ads are being shown and then, on it you know procter and gamble doesn't want their ad on top of you know a disgusting video mm -hmm. so that's why they have you know we have to look at your channel before we'll monetize yeah. it to make sure that like it's nothing bad you know yeah uh his channel is called uh marfugal news so m-a-r-f-o-o-g-l-e news or tv you can yeah so his one, two channels two are marfogel news and marfogel tv yeah his name and, is adam yeah and he does like alternative news kind of stuff like aliens and government plots and yeah. you know like it's really interesting Fault stuff. lines like things that are just going on in the world today very controversial stuff you know mm -hmm. uh, so you might get pulled in. So, you know, remember to <laughs> remember to put down the phone or the computer sometimes. Yeah, don't get sucked in don't too deep. Don't get sucked deep. in too deep. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to thank you guys so much. Is If there was one last thing, and I know you've gotten some more subscribers. They've been saying it throughout the oh, chat. Thank you, thank you so much. much. If there was one way or one thing to describe your channel or to say to encourage people to come check it out, what would it be? Uh, we like to have fun and we love to laugh and we hope that we can make you guys laugh and just ho hopefully bring up your spirits for your day. If you're having a rough day, you know, click on the channel. I think it will make you laugh and feel a little bit more positive and a little bit better because we go through stuff all the time. So, you know, <laughs> learn a little that, you know, how to be a little bit more positive maybe that hopefully that helps. Yeah. We just want to share love and joy and positivity and all the beautiful places that we get to see. 
Have you heard of Freestyle McCary Mac? No, but I'm into it. I'm going to check them out now. <laughs> <laughs> so again, for everybody, um, badge everyone needs one. Thanks for coming. Um, so for everyone in the chat, the, the link to the their video, I can't speak English all of a sudden. <laughs> in the description below is the channel link. How does that sound? That's <laughs> perfect. perfect. <laughs> Well, thank you again so much. And I hope you guys have a great night. I hope it's cooled down enough for you to get some yeah. sleep. The sun has gone down and now I can live and I'm like gonna, a normal human being. I'm going to turn on the air conditioner. <gasps> we don't have one. No, we don't have one. <laughs> no air, conditioner, air conditioner, guys. The fans have been Too going good. the whole time. So I apologize if there's been some background noise. But there was no way that we could do this without them. Yeah, if you no, want to get really angry, angry with each other, put us in a hot box when we're hungry, and then yeah. you'll really see. <laughs> we learned that during the building process. <laughs> that is so funny. All right, well, I want to thank everybody in the chat for coming out, and I want to thank you so much. Life so much, and I hope you all have a fabulous, fabulous night. Yeah, take care, guys. Bye. Thanks for having us.